Welcome back to Newsmax Now. New Hampshire represents ground zero for the 2016 election, but it also is home to a much larger issue facing the country, heroin addiction. From 2013 to 2014, the amount of drug overdoses in the Granite State have spiked more than 73 percent. An increase in heroin abuse over the past decade has made addiction a top campaign issue, especially for the people of New Hampshire who mourn the lives of more than 350 people from overdose just this past year. Republicans are stepping up to confront this epidemic. At a New Hampshire addiction forum, Republican presidential candidate Ted Cruz shared an emotional story of his half-sister's overdose. Mary, her whole life was angry. She never forgave my dad for divorcing her mother. And she struggled her whole life with drug and alcohol abuse. She wasn't prepared to change the path she was on. And then, a few years ago, Marion died of an overdose. And joining us during today's roundtable, columnist for The Hill, Brent Budowski, also with us, columnist for the Fiscal Times, Liz Peek. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Brent, let's start with you. Cruz has been hit pretty hard by his rivals during this campaign. It's not always being the easiest to get along with. Do you think that this speech will change people's perception of him in any way? Well, it's hard for me to tell because it depends how much it reverberates in New Hampshire. I will say, uh, and I'm not the biggest fan of Ted Cruz, uh, it was a moving speech. It was a tragic situation. Uh, I honestly didn't know what was this big a problem until about two months ago when I actually heard uh, Bernie and Hillary talking about it. Uh, and when I looked into it, it is a horrifying epidemic. It affects uh, rural areas as well as urban areas. It affects all races. It's not black and inner city only. It's, it's everybody. It is a crisis in New Hampshire. And, you know, I, I was moved by the Ted Cruz story on a personal level. And I will say on this issue, I would hope we can find ways to do bipartisan actions uh, to solve this problem. I think on this, Democrats and Republicans should try to work together. Uh, and you just can't have uh, these many people dying over something like that. I didn't even know that that yeah. many people were using heroin. Liz, do you Very sad. Yeah. Liz, do you think that this will help Cruz better connect with the people of New Hampshire? Well, look, yes, because first of all, this is a big problem in New Hampshire. And by the way, for the last several years, this has been a huge topic of conversation, not only in New Hampshire, but neighboring Vermont and in other states as well. I think it was the governor of Vermont last year who, based in his State of the State address, called this the, the state's biggest problem and biggest crisis, which was really kind of a call to action. Uh, it, because, by the way, we're seeing the deaths, but we're not talking about the, the proliferation of the use of heroin. That's right. really the troubling thing, because this is not just something uh, which is killing people sporadically, but it's really becoming a much broader uh, problem in terms of people being, in a sense, sickened by it. Um, but to answer your question directly, I think this shows, look, Cruz has a heart. Who knew? Uh, he's a pretty tough guy, and I think all we hear is about how people don't like him, and he's a tough competitor. Right. Uh, we hear about the dirty tricks in Iowa, et cetera, et cetera. So, yes, I think this was a, I don't, I would hate to say anyone tells a story like this for political reasons, but it probably won't hurt him politically. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. you know, let's not, let's be honest. It was told for political reasons. Doesn't mean that it, he didn't mean it or wasn't sincere about the That's story here. Um, right. And unfortunately, this is what it takes for one of these issues to to get up on uh, the list of priorities for these candidates. We also remember hearing Chris Christie talk about it yeah. pretty He's emotionally kind of the one as that well. Started the trend, basically. Well, Carly Fiorina, I think, was actually oh, the first true. one to really I bring it corrected. up back at the uh, Republican debate back yeah. in September. And just this week at the White House. President Obama met with Speaker Ryan and Mitch McConnell. They went through a laundry list of things on the president's wish list, but mm -hmm. this was the one issue where it does seem like there is some bipartisan support to get something done to address this crisis that we're facing in our country. I just worry if it's coming up like this on a campaign speech, if uh, politicians have a ten tendency to muck things up and if this isn't going to make it more difficult to solve the problem. Uh, Brent, what do you think? Well, I hope that they find a way, Democrats and Republicans, to work together on it. Uh, I, I'll tell you one brief, brief story that when I worked for Lloyd Benson in the Senate, 
Uh, there was a bill that was uh, to help people and institutions. It was seen as a civil rights bill. Uh, he told me of a certain Republican conservative senator that I should talk to, and he would try to talk to as well. You would never, ever think that this conservative Republican senator, who was nationally prominent on the right, would help. It turns out, uh, Benson said, don't ever tell a soul this, that his, uh, he had adopted uh, and his wife several uh, retarded children who were abused. He doesn't want to claim credit politically for it, but he will understand the issue. And he ended up being helpful and profound. And I never even let on that I knew it when I discussed it with the senator. But Sometimes things like you never this know, Brent. can affect you know. policy. Brent, Liz, thank you both for joining us. Hope you both have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. You, you too. too. Take care now. Coming up next, we'll talk to former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino about new upgrades for the presidential limo.